Hey guys, John here. Today's patch in pigments is called Upon the Altar, and I was starting off with a pad and wanted to make something creepy, and it's kind of hard to call this either a pad or a texture. It plays a little bit differently than a pad. It's more so maybe laying the scene of something kind of creepy-like. So with that being said, this is Upon the Altar. All right, so I think you get the idea for this one. It came out a little bit creepy, so kind of cool. So let's get into it here. So the synth, let's look at the utility engine. We're using all three of these oscillators. Let's turn that one off. Engine two, let's turn that off. Engine one, let's keep this guy on. And then let's take a look at our effects here. We're gonna be using quite a bit here. So let's turn all those off. So basically for this, first things first, since it's kind of like a pad texture kind of thing, let's look at the VCA envelope. So our attack is gonna be 1.38 seconds, the decay 1.44 seconds, sustained 0.784, and release 1.36 seconds. Our curves here is the negative, or for the attack curve is negative 0 0.800, our decay is gonna be negative four. So basically, it sounds like this for the first engine with no effects just going through the filters. So our wavetable that we're going to be using is called Dune, and that's found in Processed, and it's kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe kind of at the top here, but you'll find it. It's in the D section, right? Because <laughs> the D section. So it's in Dune right here. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to be modulating this position knob here at a small amount of 0.12 with random number one. So if you look at random number one, this is going to be sample and hold, sampled from white noise and re-triggered from the clock and the rate's going to be one over eight. And the reason because, or the reason I did this in as a clock thing, so if you have a certain tempo that something comes in later, this kind of pulsating thing is going to be in sync with the song that you have or whatever you whatever you're using. All right, next up here, so we have Unison, three voices of Unison, detuned 1.50%, stereo 100%. And we're dropping this whole engine down by two octaves, so negative 24 semitones. This is getting sent to filter number one right over here. And since we're here, there's gonna be two different modulation sources we're going on here, which is gonna be this fold FM. So we're gonna be doing some wave folding and also some frequency modulation. That's why it's called fold FM, right? So as we turn this here, we can see that this knob over here is substantially getting moved, this frequency modulation, almost like 75%. We can actually look exactly, 71%, pretty close. But it's also moving this wave folding, but at a smaller amount at 0.10, so 10%. So as you can see, the one over here, this frequency modulation is moving a lot. And then this one over here is kind of moving just a little bit as we move this macro here. So that's going to be those two modulations there, which makes it sound like this. And there's a lot of cool textures all in between that right there. So you don't always have to modulate this. You can kind of just move it until you find a cool texture. Maybe something like that. And kind of just leave it there. Totally up to you how you want to use the uh, Fold FM macro. So next up, let's turn this engine off here and let's go to engine number two. So this one is gonna be a sample engine and we're using horror bows, which kind of, I guess, makes sense for this type of patch. So this can be found in other and then it's gonna be in the uh, H category, which is the only one called Horror Bow. So make sure to double click that. So we get that kind of weird sound. So we are using granular synthesis. The start position for the sample is going to be 0 0.404, <laughs> right? Not found. Anyway, the density is going to be 26.9 hertz. This is going to be default, didn't change this. And then the time is going to be 1000 milliseconds or one second. 
As you notice, these are moving to the left and that's done over here on the direction here. This is going to be direction backwards. And I did change the pitch randomness over here to 0.280 to kind of get a little bit more creepy vibe. So all these grains are going to be randomly pitched a little bit more from all the other ones by uh, default. Kind of nice. And I'm going pitching up and down here. As we can see, this up and down arrow here, it's going to be going both directions for the random pitch dispersion. So that's basically what that engine is doing here. It's going to filter number two. So let's turn this guy off. And oh, actually, last bit thing before we go from here, I did use this filter here. It's kind of easy to overlook, but it's very convenient for this engine here. It's just a nice little filter here that we're going 22% high pass. Very nice that that's built in there. So turning this guy off, let's go to our utility engine, turn this on. So we're going to be using three here. So we're going to be using wooden floor, ghost, and a sub oscillator. So let's turn off the sub and noise two and take a listen to just the first one. So kind of a weird unsettling sound, right? That creepy kind of like crack crackling floorboards, whatever it is. Or like a rocking chair in the uh, <laughs> somewhere like outside in uh, in the fog or something like that. That's going to filter number two and the volume is going to be at negative 4.53. Next up, we have Ghost. Now this kind of reminded me of almost that uh, that TV static you hear when the static's kind of going on, the whole ring kind of vibe thing. And it's kind of cool to modulate that volume so it's kind of louder, quieter, louder, softer, but it's still also in tempo with your song. So I reached for the random one, which we used to, which we used before for the wavetable position. And that's going to be the same thing, sample and hold, some from white noise, reach trigger from the clock, and the rate's 1 over 8. So... By default, I set this knob at minus 11.6 dB and then modulated this at a rate of 0.18. Or a modulation rate, I should say. And then last but not least, we have the sub oscillator. Which is just a sine wave down one octave here and always going direct out. This is also on a macro here, which is going to be the sub down over here. So if you have a sub in your song and you don't really need the low end, you can always cut that out. Or you can put it in if you don't have any low end and you would like some. Pretty convenient on a macro. So with all that said, let's turn all this back on here, including engine two and engine number one. So this is basically what we have. So we're at a good starting point. It's still a little bit dry and that's where the effects are gonna shine. But before we get there, let's take a look at our filters. So as we see here, this cutoff is going to be modulated by this macro over here. So if you have this patch, don't necessarily reach for this cutoff knob. Go for the macro because it's set up a little bit more uh, conveniently for this patch. Plus the knob's bigger, right? Bigger's always better, as they say. The resonance here is going to be substantially high at 0 0.700. There's no macro for the resonance, so that's kind of stuck right over here. If you want a little bit less or more, you're going to have to reach up to this knob yourself. MS-20, like we said before, and the low pass 12, no keyboard tracking. Now keep in mind, the filter routing here is going to be this, uh, it's going to be on some, but also this knob is going to go all the way to the right. So filter one and filter number two are going to be parallel. So we're not sending the filter, the output of filter one to filter number two. All right, so... Filter number two. So for, well, for for the first one, we should kind of recap and say this engine one, the wavetable is going to filter number one. This first one, number two is going to this one over here, the second MS-20. And then the utility engine, the first two are going to filter number two. So really the only one that's going to filter number one is going to be this wavetable engine one. Everything else is going to filter number two with exception to the oscillator, the sub-oscillator that's direct out. Now this one is also going to be the MS-20 and the cutoff is also mapped to this macro here, but just a little bit less of a value. To, as you can see, the first one moves quite a bit, the second one not so much. So that way we get a pretty cool filter sweep. The resonance for filter number two is 0 0.660. I should have done 666, missed opportunity, but that's mainly my life. Anyway, moving on from there, we have our effects. So. Yeah, take a deep breath, uh, maybe get a cup of coffee and come back to this because there's quite a bit going on here. Let's turn off our auxiliary, let's turn off our effects B, and then let's take a look at number A over here. So, first thing that this is going to hit is going to be a delay. 
Now the time is going to be a 1 over 8th dotted note, the fine 0 feedback 0 0.140, stereo spread 0 0.108, high pass 153 Hz, low pass 20k, and the dry wet's going to be 0 for the knob but modulated by 0.12 or 12%. We hit another delay after that and it's going to be a quarter note, fine 0 feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0.162, high pass 226, low pass 20k. And for this one, modulation amount is going to be 0.09 or 9%. From there, we go to a shimmer. But this one isn't going to be as pretty because we have this pitch shift down one semitone. So we get that really creepy tail, that reverb tail at the end that kind of descends in pitch. So take a listen to this. That's the glory of a shimmer reverb, and we're detuning it there. The feedback is going to be 0.5, size 68.4%, modulation 1, high pass 200, low pass 7K, ducking 0, stereo width 0 0.750, and the modulation for the dry wets 0.40 or 40%. For FXB, we have a pitch shifting delay. Let's turn these up, pitch shifting delay, which is kind of nice too, because we have this pitch shift also down one semitone. So as the delays happen, it's going to kind of, you know, drop down and pitch by one semitone. Kind of working the same way as the shimmer reverb was so this is going to be one over four the spray 16.6 milliseconds the pitch shift like i said negative one semitone so down one semitone feedback 0 0.250 high pass 20k or 20 hertz low pass 20k stereo detune seven set or 7.00 cents and stereo offset zero the dry wet amount is going to be modulated by 0 0.20, which is 20%. Then we have our multiband, and like I always say, this is really to taste, kind of just select the multiband and kind of move these bars until you kind of feel what sounds right. Next up, this hits a distortion on soft clip. The drive is going to be 26.6% or 26.6 .6 dB. The dry wet's going to be kind of high at 0.66. Ah, oh, there we go. I got that one right. It's going to be auto-selected here. No change in the output. It's kind of default at negative 10.5. And then this high pass section is disabled, so don't even worry about that. And last but not least, I wanted to put this chorus reverb like on here as well. As we can see, the send knob is sending at a value of negative 5.15 reverb like preset for the chorus and the dry wet amount is going to be also on the fx at 0 0.250 so as we turn this here we can turn off this as well that because it's on the auxiliary send Yeah, that's upon the altar kind of a pad but kind of a texture so yeah it's kind of both in its in its own right so really the kind of way you want to play this one is kind of don't really play a lot of notes play maybe one or two and really kind of work with the uh with the macros to kind of get that tonality right with the cutoff this fold fm and uh yeah Yeah, so hopefully you learned something. If you'd like to get the patch for free, there's the link in the video description below, and it can be yours. And thanks for watching. I think I just said that already. Yeah, anyway, we'll see you in the next video.